introduce the uh, moderator for this discussion, Noeline Sumba. Let's give her a round of applause. Hi. Um, thank you for welcoming by, me back on stage, Charlene. So um, we're going to be getting into an interesting panel discussion on uh, cutting edge solutions than platforms that are revolutionizing the way individuals learn about Bitcoin. So I'm going, I have an interesting panel with me. I would love to introduce um, Hash Javeri from Wiser. Um, I have Samson Olusegun from Chaincode Labs. And uh, Ayobami Atolagbe from Noans. So, um, hi guys, welcome to today's uh, panel discussion. Um, I am really passionate about Bitcoin education. Um, I think there's so many innovative ways we can be able to carry out uh, education in this space. And uh, I'll just get straight to the point. Uh, maybe I can start with you, uh, Ayobami. What do you feel are the challenges we're experiencing right now in terms of Bitcoin education? All right, uh, for Bitcoin education, the challenges I would say is being first more, I would call it the the limitation in language. Yeah. Yeah, you see people travel all the way from wherever they're traveling from. L let me even localize it. I'm a Nigerian. I speak Yoruba. And I need to go to the northern part of Nigeria to communicate with them. Now, my demography might be people that are between the age of 15 to 35 or 45. Some of them might be OK to, to understand some little pigeon. But we need to get more people educated, right, which are deep in the grassroots. Some of them don't understand even the pidgin English, right? So one thing that I would say is a big challenge is that limitation in, in, in language. So, OK, I already want to provide a solution. But I'm going to stop. I'm not going to let it cut out for the back. So the limitation, I would say, so the challenge is being faced right now is that limitation in, in language, in communication, in localization of information. So that's it. So you're speaking from the point of being Nigerian. Maybe Hash, you can be able to tell us what do you feel is the challenge when it comes to education? I think like one of the issues with education in the Bitcoin space is that a lot of the, the efforts are not scalable. And I think like grassroots works, but it only works at a certain pace. And we need other top-down solutions. Um, and also another issue in Bitcoin education is that Everybody knows about Bitcoin, right? But yet, there are not that many people at these conferences, right? Like, there, there's all this talk about like BlackRock ETF, uh, Bitcoin reaching 70K um, in 2021. Um, but these people are still not here. So it means that like, we need to educate people. And people are only going to understand Bitcoin if it like, relates to them, right? If they don't get it, then they're not going to enter the space. And the only way that we can allow for this personalization is not through grassroots movements, right? If we want to really reach hyper-Bitcoinization fast, we need to have more top-down solutions. Sure. OK, so you've mentioned uh, top-down. Maybe we can go to you, Samson. What do you, how can we leverage technology in order to achieve this? So kind of like what I'm working on is the Wiser app. Yeah. It's effectively like Duolingo yeah. for Bitcoin, if you guys know what Duolingo is. If not, it's like bite-sized education on a mobile app, uh, where instead of spending hours on a podcast or a YouTube video, you finish two to three minute classes, that's gamified and fun, and you earn some stats along the way. Uh, we found this to be a very effective tool in orange pulling people at scale, uh, just based on our user growth. Okay, so uh, Samson, you can take up from there, maybe in terms of leveraging, he's mentioned uh, gamification. So maybe you can explain to us uh, why gamification is important for that. Okay, um, I think gamification is important in the aspect of um, leveraging, allowing, or allowing people to come in so that they see reward in what they want to come and do. Say, um, for instance, what we built at Chico Lab, uh, though focused on um, the engineering project, is we had people come to review uh, transcripts from Bitcoin technical talks, videos, and all, and then we pay them. Though we run some of the processes, but the final output, we want human inputs to come in 
so that we can have a, a reviewed, a proper review process for each of the um, technical contents we're putting outside. And we want them to be able to get sats for reviewing each of the contents because we don't want them to just come in and review and not have something to you know, take back. So I think the reward system is very, very important to allowing um, people to come on board to use um, the, the Bitcoin system. You also ran the Big Devs Abuja, and yeah. you were just talking to me about gamification, <laughs> um, explaining to me how it, how it works, uh, maybe the back-end side of it. So do you feel um, when it comes to education, is it better physical or online? Um, in, in respect to Big Devs, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> for, for starters, in, in Nigeria, yeah. to, to be precise, um, we face a problem where we face, we get new faces each time. So this disrupts our, dis uh, our discussion flow. For instance, for each session, we might be talking about uh, a particular tech, technology in Bitcoin, and uh, we want to continue that in the next, um, next meetup. And we have new faces. And how do we continue discussion? So uh, we, we, we are looking at online, and we, can't, we don't want to disperse the, uh, the possibility of having physical um, physical meetups, but I, I think online also works for um, for hosting this um, discussion. Yeah. So, um, hash your more yeah, top-down solution. Have, um, the reason why we need gamification is yeah. because we come from a fiat mindset, right? So, very high time preference. We need instant gratification. If we want to educate people about Bitcoin with instant gratification, that's only through gamification, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be necessarily sats that you earn in, in apps or like whatever, but it can be even like points or like XP points within an app, right? People like to feel good that they're making progress and that's the only way that they will learn, right? Like if a lot of the people over here have read books, like the Bitcoin standard, have read like, watch long YouTube videos, but I don't expect a, a, like a lot of the people outside of this conference to do the same, right? Because they have, different jobs, different career goals, family commitments. So what's the best way to educate them about, uh, like, uh, about Bitcoin and bring them out of the fiat standard is to provide some sort of gamification where it's fun to learn about it in like bite-sized modules, for example. Okay. Uh, so maybe uh, you can tell us, um, Ayubami, how does Nuance contribute to um, uh, this revolution in terms of uh, using EdTech? Uh, what strategies do you employ yourself at Nuance? Oh, all right, I'm going to pick it up from the conversation my fellow panelists said. Now, you held this particular event, and uh, possibly you traveled 3,000 kilometers together. There's no way you're going to stay there for long, right? Possibly you stay there five days a week, possibly one month maximum. You still have to leave. Now, part of what we try to do, which is not as much of ed tech, but still, because over time, we get to train. So one thing we use is the train the trainer, right? Look for somebody that is willing, make the person the head of the community, in quotes. So we get to train that person over, possibly virtually, using some video conferencing too. Now, when that person is already skewed, the person can go back into the community. We don't have to go back again. So that person gets to uh, give that value. And the second thing we are doing there right now, because over the period of seven months, we carry out some survey, and everything keeps on leading back to education. So it, it, it made it very important for us to say, okay, now it's very, it's very paramount that we get the education, not just for ourselves, not just because of our benefits, but because of the people that are using our platform, and most importantly, uh, the adoption of Bitcoin. So we set up what we call No One's Academy. So don't trade, don't buy or sell anything. Just come first of all, learn how to or educate yourself about what is Bitcoin, then you cannot transition to when you're done with that transition to how to use the platform, no one's. So as much as possible is educate yourself first. So we're, we're having like, some videos are just about one minute. So step-by-step -step guide on how to really go about Bitcoin and the platform. So I think that has been helping so far. Okay, so um, I, I like talking about um, solutions and uh, maybe I can throw it up across the panel, um, metrics of success for each of the methods you employ. Um, maybe you can tell us how far you, we can start with you, Hush. Um, what are the metrics of success you've seen with employing use of Visor? 
Um, how's the response? How's I mean, the uptick? Um, we, we launched the Wiser app in May, and we've crossed 15,000 users organically. Incredible. So I know that yeah. like, having a mobile app that's gamified and fun is a great way to orange pill people. Um, and we can start with there. But I don't think so. What I'm working on is also the only solution, right? I think there needs to be a combination of grassroots movements and having an app like mine, right? Where, where, because there is value in learning in person, but there's also value in doing homework on your side at home at night, right? So we can always combine the two, uh, like methods of teaching, um, to reach hyper Bitcoinization. Okay, um, for us, we we don't have much user yet because uh, the, this the this is the old system got launched uh, last last month. Yeah, we got announced last month, and currently we have about 100. And because we have a um, strict process of getting our reviews up so that people can finalize what is in the review before we accept it, before it goes into uh, the public for what people consume. So we can't really measure that right now. Yeah. But I think I, I told you I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you can, you can <laughs> look into it. Among the but we know, we know that, um, we know from feedback that we are getting, because we're refining it also, that okay, it's working and people really want to enter that. Though non developers, non developers want to enter that, but I also contributed to Bitcoin in a documentation part. So it's, it's really working for us based on our review process right now. So, also for you, Samson, as you tell us the metric of success with Misha and how you it has also enabled the fostering of community development. All right, so I get it right. It's more like what has been the success so far yeah. because of. Um, I want to check in my financial to give you a specific statistic, but permit me to just say uh, that number is not in my head right now. But one thing I can say is that the goal is to have about 7 million users in the next one year for no ones. How that is going to happen is already in the pipeline. So <laughs> that, that, that is the journey so far. So we're, we're already keeping up at it. And for in the aspect of education, uh, uh, like I said, the purpose of the survey which was carried out is towards the, an end, right? Uh, which is definitely towards growth. So we already know a strategy that can make that happen, and um, finger crossed, we are getting there bit by bit. Okay. I think um, there's one metric that we haven't spoken about, and it's breaking the cycle of becoming a shitcoiner. The way that if Bitcoin education is successful, we need to orange pill people so they don't go through the same cycles that we all went through, right? Like we, nice. like we heard about Bitcoin, but then we invented, um, then we uh, started investing in Shiba Inu and Dogecoin and lost our like, money in there, and then we slowly become, I guess, Bitcoin maximalists, if you want to say that. But, just, but I think in order to judge your success is if you're able to teach someone from the beginning why Bitcoin is the best form of money and why, that, why, you, should, why you don't become a shitcoiner. And that's, I think, the best metric to like, judge yourself on. I downloaded Wiser. I'll be looking to test it out. <laughs> I'm looking forward to testing chain code. At least with no ones, I've been able to see uh, you operate um, sure. in the country. I know some of your community leaders. Yeah. Um, I think there's different ways of carrying out education, and uh, it's good for us to even have uh, um, tech solutions that are making um, education much more easier and uh, better. So maybe we can finalize. Um, what can you advise in terms of uh, Bitcoin educators who want to get into your platform um, as you wind up? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yes, we can. What was the question? It was um, so in terms of Bitcoin educators who want to get to your platform, how you can be able to advise them to, uh, to go about it or maybe use your platforms? So for Wiser, it's 100% free. Uh, it's on Android and iOS. You can simply download it. And, um, and if you have your friends and family that know about Bitcoin, want to learn about it, but they're not going to read a book or watch YouTube videos, send them to the Wiser app. They'll be onboarded in like a few classes. And they'll, the first thing that they, that they learn in the Wiser app that Bitcoin is separate from crypto. And we start that from, yeah. from the first uh, get-go. Awesome. OK, um, so for us. You don't need to do anything. It works on the web. So you just have to you know, go to our perform, register. But the caveat is you have to have a GitHub account. Yeah, because uh, most of the integrations are based on v GitHub to so monitor the changes in transcripts and uh, monitor the progress. So that's it. All right. Uh, from my hand, uh, I think we just try to follow through the customer journey. Definitely, they get to be aware about the platform. Then we take them through maybe physical meeting, webinars, seminars, and the likes of it. So 
just, I'll always keep referring back to the survey, right, because we saw that data and it actually guided us and even to implement some what we call the wallet right now whereby people can top up directly, not just to transact P2P. So uh, I, I would say it's, it's all about getting the, uh, because after they sign up, they still need to understand, right? So the, the, the No One's Academy is a very good resources uh, which I'm going to buy the words um, of Wiser. It's actually free, by the way. So uh, th that, that is the journey so far. Okay. Uh, there you go, guys. Uh, different edtech solutions. We're out of time. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, incredible too. Incredible panel. <laughs> Round of applause.